is I had some relative success with uh, Steve Ward's micro SSTC driver, slightly modified. I figured I'd make another one um, with the addition of an interrupter portion. I had a couple uses um, in mind for something like this. A, I wanted to make the circuit isolated um, for various reasons, you know, feeding at higher voltage, um, isolated, interrupting, blah blah blah. Um, hadn't really thought it through all the way, but basically what I've got here is uh, got your hex inverter, Schmidt trigger, TO494 as the PWM, and the gate driver here. So it's basically the same circuit that I had before, as well as Steve Ward's, minus the triple five timer which he was using to uh, just send out a pulse to maintain oscillation uh, so it doesn't kick out and um, the gate driver so I basically just added the hex inverter and um, the way I've got this wired up is assuming that the next gate drivers I get will have functioning enable pins because none of mine do you can ground it out and do whatever it doesn't doesn't change the output um, so when the switch here is in this position, it's basically switching the PWM output to the enable pin. So, if I'm running this as a Slayer X or as SSTC, then um, I can interrupt it that way. When the switch is in that position, it's basically just sending the output to the input of the hex inverter. And it's doing it the same way as an antenna would, like I've got right here. Um, and it's important to do that in this setup because this TL494 is configured to output over 10 volts. It's not logic level. So while you have to make sure you feed the Schmidt trigger no more than about 5 volts, um, it's the same for the inputs. The inputs have clamping diodes, and I would imagine we, there's extras on here just to help it. Um, but you've got to... Um, make sure you're not feeding that directly into the input of the hex inverter because you'll damage it um, so basically this is just clamped you know using the same input as the antenna um, and it brings it kind of a little dangerously close but it's it's been alright so basically um, what I can do with this is since the output is going to be cleaned up going through the Schmidt trigger and then driving the gate driver um, I can basically just a not only test various gate drive transformers, gate drivers, and just get more familiar with these common beginner SSTC components. It's a pretty good learning tool. I can sit here and change out uh, gate resistors and MOSFETs and just see how everything interacts. Um, but I can also tune this to output at a particular frequency, which. Um, in this case goes up to a little over 800 kilohertz so that's not bad so I can ring coils up to that frequency at their resonant frequency and uh, drive them that way of course there's no feedback that way uh, but it's just cool to do and uh, likewise if I wanted to you know still use Steve Steve Ward's circuit put the antenna in there hook the coil up drive it that way the only difference is it's isolated and uh, you can ramp the voltage up a lot higher. It's about 800 kilohertz now and uh, if I adjust the fine tuning here I can get a different range so I can actually bring it up to actually pretty high there over 860 kilohertz so that's where we're at now and now I can vary it all the way from about that all the way down to about 114 kilohertz or so and see we've got a about 50 nanoseconds at switching that's directly from the TL494 So I'm going to leave that about where it's at. Alright, so now I'm going to probe the uh, outputs of the Schmidt trigger. Let's do this one right here. 
Uh, can't really tell which one is whether this is inverted or not. It's about 50%. Uh, you can see the switching time. It's you know it puts out a, a cleaner square. This actually doesn't look very clean. Um, I've got some ripple coming from this little battery supply I've got, um, but relatively high frequency. Not you know not too high. See it's a little faster. And if I probe other output it's going to look about the same but just inverted so that is what is being fed into the gate driver here and then now I'm going to check the gate driver output so this is the output from the gate driver it's about the same speed pretty fast uh, doesn't look too amazing there still no voltage on the FET though and now I'm gonna check the uh, gate of the MOSFET All right, so I'm probing the gate now and uh, you can see this is this is what we've got now it's not too terribly bad with no voltage on it and uh, still not, not the best GDT but See how this would, you know, like I say, I, I would use this to sort of test GDTs, sweep through fairly wide frequency range. Um, of course, since this is an interrupter, I've got a lower frequency range, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, such a low frequency, you're just going to get ringing, so there's really no point testing anything that low. Um, so, I like to test it <laughs> pretty much right around what I intend on driving a coil at. When I uh, move it to about, let's say, this right here, that's about what I'm hitting the uh, small coil with that I'm going to drive uh, later. And of course if I switch the output to the enable pin, um, you don't get anything because I've tried to tidy up all the inputs to where there's no crosstalk going on and uh, it seems pretty clean. If you don't do that, then um, you might pick some shit up through the uh, inverter. Alright, so right now, I've got the uh, circuit set up to um, drive the hex inverter and the gate driver at a certain frequency. So, i just got this coil hooked up. I'm just going to tune the uh, output to the resonant frequency of the coil to see how that goes. I've got um, the bottom of L2 grounded. I've got the duty. I'm going to start turning the duty up. You can see that starts lighting. And I've got it sort of tuned. Once I get right about on there, the record, the phone's cutting out. You can see I'm varying the uh, frequency. I get a little breakout there. So I'm about right on the resonant frequency. If I go a little too high, it cuts out. But I still draw a little something off there. But you can see, uh, I gotta back it. So, right about there. Or so, of course, you see it starts changing around. Back up real far to keep the phone from the freaking dying. But so now, cut the duty cycle up. If I go too, too high above 50%, doesn't really work. This is sort of a, you know, limited to 50% duty topology here. See, getting it, you can get it in tune. It takes a little finicking. So, well, right about there. Cut it up a little bit. Maybe I can zoom in. So this is just pulsing the coil at its resonant frequency. Which, is going to be something that it's probably going to need to be tuned a lot and retuned, little things like that. It's no big deal. Um, but, you know, not bad output. You can see right now, um, it's going out of tune. I'm going to retune it. Now I've got this rigged up with the antenna to run more like a Steve Ward circuit. Cut that up. 
and I don't know, this might not be the best arrangement right now. But, uh, so, you know, that's like about 30 volts or so. Without really tuning it a whole lot, I'm just going to cut the voltage up. Well, you know, just a little more output, well over 30 volts. It's not perfect. As you can see, it works pretty much the same way. I do need to shield this. It keeps cutting out. This is one of the most annoying videos ever, but you can sort of see. I'm just sort of popping the supply cap. It's probably only reaching like 40 volts. And um, it, it, the ZVS just charges the cap up. Uh, before the circuit actually surges it out, but uh, that's not bad. Of course, like I say, the whole point of, of this was uh, other purposes, but you know, you could drive the Fed directly and get better output. I'll be trying to get this interrupted pretty soon, the half bridge. Um, I had to sort of butcher my main driver to add this NAN, uh, NAND gate on there, these NAND gates to get those, tr trying to interrupt those that way. Then I also had to add a freaking interrupter to do that, but I noticed that um, it will interrupt pretty good at certain voltages, but at other voltages it won't. Um, so, especially with mains voltage, it, it struggles above a certain point for some reason. I think that's because the, uh, just the condition of my feedback um, with the secondary CT but what I'm going to try to do is just build a simple little oscillator maybe the five triple five and um, you know try to feed just a constant signal like Steve used to do hopefully that'll maybe uh, maintain it well enough to where I can get it interrupted properly definitely annoying um, I shouldn't have to be doing all this. Uh, I should have just got what I paid for with these gate drivers. Um, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna assume the next ones I get in the mail here pretty soon are going to work. Um, so I'm probably gonna have to take this route. Either way you look at it, I'm gonna try it from a very uh, the, this shiesty setup, just <laughs> using using the uh, power input driving the half bridge and. Um, just gonna see what I can ramp that at uh, without really trying to pop it, I guess you could say. First, I gotta get my high tech fuse wired up. Go ahead and take a strand off that because that's a little too much. Can't really see how thick that wire is. Yeah. Alright, kinda got that little meter in the background. <clears throat> I wonder, is my phone gonna kick out? Probably. Oh, can't see what the voltage is because it screws with it. Tell I need to mess with this damn antenna. Look <sighs> at the damn lights now. All right, kind of move that out the way. That's, that's lit up pretty good back there, but uh, for no top load on here. And 
there goes the little fuse. If the uh, fit didn't happen to go, which I don't think it did, I think it just pulled too much, pulled more than that little wire could take. That wasn't bad. That would be pretty good interrupted output right there for that bush. And you know, I don't think I really got higher than maybe like uh, 100 volts tops. Yep, I'm pretty sure that little wire would have gone for that fuse. So, yeah, I'll try again. All right, changed my uh, top notch fuse out. And we're back, and the meter just cut off about 30 volts again. So just sort of show show the bush again. Uh, I, I would say about 100 volts, maybe it was. Well, nah, it was about 75 for it popped that. So this little single strand of wire <clears throat> probably held up to about maybe a few amps tops. It's really hard to say, um, but I would say at about 75 volts, eh, it's probably to be expected. Um, so I think that would get really good interrupted arcs. It's just a shame I don't actually have a damn working uh, gate driver with an enable pin. So now I kind of wish I would have wired this up so I could... Uh, interrupted like this, but I don't know, maybe I'll figure something out, but yeah, it's not bad set up like that The reason I'm not trying to drive in any higher is because I've actually I'm down to my last five amp fuse And I don't want to put a bootleg one on, on the very egg and um, I've got some other things I want to run so <laughs> I have to push that later to see what that'll take. I'll probably drive that uh, to See how high I can crank it before the Fed goes uh, When I interrupt the half bridge got a build the damn oscillator for it now figure out how to get everything all tidied up because uh you know the whole game can change once you get it <laughs> all sorted